Hey, what is up, YouTube? It is Be The Installer, and I am in LA today to install another Frame TV. I'm here at a Instagram follower, Playa Julie, who asked me to come up here and personally install this for her because she was a little bit nervous watching my last video. Hopefully it wasn't because of my last video, but because my last video was good, that she actually wanted me to do it for her. But we're gonna go ahead and show you how to install this TV. And at the end of the video, I am actually gonna go through the ambient mode and show you how the artwork works. Artwork works, yes. And I'm gonna answer some of the questions that people had asked on the first uh, very popular Samsung Frame video. So make sure to follow along and let's get to the unboxing. So there's the TV. Inside the uh, box is the no gap wall mount, which is what we're gonna use uh, on the wall here. I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. This whole packet contains the fiber optic cord, the remote, some spacers, and the power cord. So hold on to that as the installation goes on. So the one connect box here is pretty cool. Um, it actually takes out the entire brain of the TV and puts it in this box so that you can have a flat TV or it looks like a frame on the wall. So you connect all of your HD devices to the back here into these inputs. It has a connection for a networking cord, an optical cord. Uh, you can connect an old school antenna to it. And then it connects the one connect to the TV, which also powers the TV. So this box is important. So whenever you get a frame TV, you have to know where you're gonna put this box ahead of time because it's not like you, you can't just hide it behind the TV since the frame is flat against the wall. So. Just make sure if you haven't purchased this TV yet that you know what you're gonna do with this one connect box. And uh, I'll show you what we're gonna do with it in this install here. And so real quickly, we're gonna unbox this uh, no gap wall mount and show you how it's used. So it has this template right here that shows you a lot of measurements. It can be a little confusing, so kind of disregard this. I mean, obviously. Here's the wall plate that it comes with and the, uh, the bolts are actually attached to it. It's kind of nice how they just keep those things together. So put this aside for the wall. Let's go ahead and put this on the back of the TV. So let's go ahead and take these off. As you can see on this side, there's uh, some instructions for if you have certain TVs. This is for a 65 and 75 inch, you take these off. For ours, you leave them on. So we're gonna go ahead and just fit this over. And then there's the four screws that were attached. We're gonna go ahead and just put those into where they need to be. So you guys can watch and see how I do that and just follow along if you're installing this. It's actually a pretty good idea, and this customer already did this. Use the little uh, blue painter tape and kind of measure the TV and put it on the wall like uh, where you anticipate the TV to be. It'll make it really easy for you to then measure. So um, for us to figure out where the bracket will be compared to this TV, I'm just gonna open this up. Uh, this is the tilt mechanism, and I'm gonna attach the bracket like I, I will be doing at the end of this install, and I'm gonna push it flat against the TV. And since we know where this is gonna be on the wall, and I'll show you, uh, really the easiest measurement is just to measure how far down from the top of the TV it is to this bracket, because that's what I wanna know is where this bracket is gonna attach on the wall. So if I do that, it's seven inches, and so if I'm going down seven inches, I'll know exactly where that bracket will be. So let's go ahead and check and see how that works on the wall. So now that we have the bracket on the TV and we have the wall plate here and the measurement from the top of the TV to where this wall plate's gonna fit, I'm gonna show you how to measure on the wall. So as you can see behind me, there is the blue painter tape. And so we already know where this TV is gonna go, but I'm gonna show you how we got here. Um, so first, we wanna measure the wall and figure out how wide the wall is. And it's 76 inches, so we wanna uh, mark a center point of 38, so our mark is right there. And then this TV is actually uh, 48 and a half inches wide. So we measure 24 inches from each side to get this, uh, to get the width here. And then it's 28 inches tall. And so, um, you know, the customer had decided how high they want it. They're gonna have a table and chairs underneath this. So for the height, we have the 28 inches tall. And as we had said before, we just need to go seven inches down from the top. 
So it's the center of this is our, our mark. So seven inches down, and I'm gonna make a mark right there. So that mark right there is where the top of the mount will be. So we will have the mount sitting just like that. And once you have that mark and you know where it is in center and everything, which we're gonna mark right now, you'll have the exact spot in which this needs to go for your TV to, to be in this area. So we'll leave the, the blue tape up until we're finished and see how close we were to hitting those marks. So first I'm gonna make my marks for where that bracket will be and then my center line as well. And now we have to find out where the stud is. Um, I have a video on stud finding, so feel free to check with that if you, if you need to, to find studs in the wall. Um, you can knock on the wall and kind of feel where, where the sound is the most dense is where a stud is. Uh, you can also use these boxes to isolate where a stud is. Uh, and I just happen to know that when I reached inside here, there was a stud right there. So we have a stud right in the middle of where we want it, which is great because that will uh, be easy for me to show you guys how to secure this mount to the wall. Uh, and then the other studs will be outside of that. Uh, they'll be 16 inches each way. So they're not gonna help us with this mount specifically. So you can take a stud finder and go over this area. There is our stud right there. It's just a little bit to the right of center. And you can put a little S on it if you need to remember where the stud was. And again, this one, if we use it, will be there as well. So we have our studs, we have our center line, we have the top of the mount. So now we can go ahead and put that bracket up. So we're gonna put the mount right here centered. Obviously you can see the center line of this mount. And we'll put the level on top and we're gonna level it out. And once we have it leveled and in the center, We'll go ahead and, and we're gonna make our whole marks. And I actually use the bracket instead of the template because the template can lie where the bracket can't. I mean, this is the actual unit that we're gonna use to hang it on, not the template. And sometimes the template will shift a little bit or it won't be exact. I mean, it is just printed on paper. So uh, this is the mount, it can't lie. I'm gonna mark it up. I'm gonna mark those two holes on the left side to use with toggle bolts. I'm gonna mark these two on the right as well. And then the center one is gonna hit that stud. In every install, you may have to use different fasteners and different methods to get a bracket on the wall. In this instance, I am gonna actually angle the two uh, screws so that they can hit this stud. And I'm gonna to use toggle bolts to hold it up in, in the other spots. Because if I was to shift it over, the TV will be off-centered. And for something that's gonna be art, and a TV on this wall. Uh, we really want to get it centered in the, in, the, in the appropriate place that the customer wanted. But for this left side, I need to anchor it in with at least one toggle bolt to hold this side up. And uh, when you're gonna use studs and toggle bolts, it's easiest if you put the toggle bolts in first and then drill the studs in second. So these toggle bolts are great. I've shown in other videos how to use those, but basically uh, you make a hole in the drywall, you pop them through and they open up and then um, you just drive, uh, you know, this bolt drives in and you have metal on metal contact in the wall here. And that is very strong. They hold 100 pounds per toggle bolt. So when you put a couple of those, you're gonna hold a couple hundred pounds just on that side alone. So those toggle bolts require me to use a half inch bit. So I have the half inch bit on here and we're gonna go ahead and drill straight. And then we take these toggle bolts, which you can get at Home Depot or any hardware store, push them through that hole, pull them back out so they open up. And there you go. Once they're in, you just break them off, break off the extra pieces, zip tie it tight, pop that off. So now you have those two, uh, those plastic is holding that, that piece of metal against the back of the ply, uh, against the back of the drywall. And now we're gonna drive the, the bracket in. So I'm gonna drive this bolt into this toggler and make sure that it's centered. We'll hold it in there tight. It'll move a little bit until I put the second one in and probably even until I put this, the screw into the stud here, but we'll get it started. All right, so I got that side uh, secure and I'll tighten those up a little bit more, but now I'm gonna drill into the studs on this side and into the middle. Sometimes even the best can be tricked about there being a stud there. So I had a clear mark that there was a stud there, but it wasn't there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a toggle bolt there. So uh, kind of the same deal as the other side. We're just gonna take the half inch drill bit. So actually uh, those three toggle bolts could completely hold the weight of this TV. I have no question about that. Um, this could hold hundreds of pounds 
Uh, but because there's a stud right in the middle, we're obviously gonna attach into that. And the, uh, the instructions say to use a three millimeter or one eighth drill bit, so I got that here. And as I said before, it's a little bit off-centered, so we're gonna angle the drill bit, uh, and we're just gonna go in at an angle to get to this stud. And the same thing here on the bottom. Before we put the screws in that Samsung provided, I just wanna let you guys know, these are a little bit tricky. The, the Phillips head on those are a little bit tighter than the normal Phillips bit in, uh, in America, I guess. It is a JIS system, which is a little bit different. Um, so it can uh, strip on your, on your Phillips. So make sure that you use the 1 8 inch drill bit. And what helps actually, a lot of people have commented on this too, and I appreciate that, is that you can actually take a bar of soap and rub the, uh, rub the bolts on the bar of soap and it will help you guide those in a little better. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that on these and give them a little bit more, give them a little lubrication on going through there. So now we got those two bolts that I'm gonna use on the center stud uh, all lubed up and we'll fire them in. All right, there you go. The mount is level, we're good to go there. So now we have to address the one connect box and, uh, and this power outlet that's here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and back it out and we're gonna figure out how we're gonna run this one connect cord. In the other Samsung frame video that I made, I showed you guys how to uh, make a hole in the wall to hide the, the wire that goes down the wall here. Um, and I just wanna mention that the, wall, uh, the wire that comes with this is not in wall rated. So we're gonna be sending it down a conduit today. Um, if you wanna get the one that is in wall rated, if you're concerned about that, they, they do sell it on, uh, I believe on Amazon, if not on samsung.com. So make sure, check with your local codes if you're not comfortable with that wire being in the wall. Uh, we're gonna put it down this conduit and just make sure that you don't kink the wire. But I'm gonna show you guys how to measure that again. It's 18 inches from that side of the TV. And also you can measure it up from the bottom. So it's six inches up and it's about 18 inches over from this side. So I'm just gonna show you guys on the wall where that goes. So we'll go ahead and make a mark at the 18 inches right there. And then we also showed that it would be ideal to have it up about six inches from the bottom. So we can make a mark there. So really ideally, the best spot for the one connect hole would be there. But because I already have a hole here, what I'm gonna do is the cord is gonna U-turn and go down this hole. You could also make your hole here. Just make like a two inch by two inch hole, send it down the wall and at the bottom, you could just make a cover plate. I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of this stuff so that we just have a hole here. And then we're gonna send that one connect wire down the wall. There, so now as you can see, I removed uh, the cover plate and everything here and I kind of sunk this power outlet in so it's pretty much flat and I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with how that TV will sit. And again, we have the pads if we need to create like a quarter inch uh, spacer around this, but we're good and now we have our hole where the one connect will attach here and go right down this hole and down to the bottom. So inside this accessory kit, we have the fiber optic cable that we're gonna use to run down the wall now. We have the power cord, of course, which we're gonna to need to power the one connect box. Of course, inside of this little guy is this awesome remote. This remote can control pretty much everything. And then the batteries, of course. So now I'm gonna go ahead and use this one connect cord and send it down the wall. So uh, this piece is for connecting it to the TV here, the bigger piece. And so that is harder to get down the wall um, and then the piece that connects to the one connect box is actually a lot skinnier. So what I typically do is send that skinnier part down the wall um, because that's just easier to do, uh, and especially in this conduit. Sometimes you need to use a fish tape to run wires down the wall. I'm gonna see if I'm able to just uh, send it down and catch it at the bottom. If we can do that, that's ideal. Voila, we got that down the wall. So I'm gonna pull the excess down the wall here and just leave a little bit at the top there for it to connect. So now we have the cord in the wall and it's gonna connect like I had said, right, this mark. And we'll have a little bit of slack for it to go down the wall. So that's pretty much all we have left to do. And now we're gonna hang the TV. And just remember at the end to stick around because I'm gonna go uh, over the ambient mode 
show how to connect the TV and set it up, and then uh, I'm gonna answer some questions that I've gotten from Instagram and from uh, the YouTube comments. All right, so right before we hang this, we're gonna go ahead and connect this. So we have to take this little cover off and it goes in where um, it's kind of square, but there's two little grooves and those grooves face out. That also says TV, which faces out towards you. And you just go ahead and you connect it. Make sure it connects in there. And then again, as I had said before, ours is gonna bend back. Just make sure that you don't kink this. It is fiberglass, and if you give it a big kink, it will break the fiberglass and it will render it useless. So you can't bend or break that wire. It's very uh, necessary for this TV. And so now we're gonna go ahead and just connect this up on top of this bracket and we'll be finished. So as you can see, uh, we tilted that uh, bracket a little bit and connected it right on there and it's connected. So now we're just gonna back up and we're gonna sit the TV flat against the wall and we'll be done with this. So now that this is on, I'm gonna go ahead and situate my one connect cord. You can pull out the bottom with understanding that it's not gonna fall off. It's, it's very secure on that bracket. I am gonna feed that down the wall now a little bit better. And as I said before, we don't want to kink that wire, so I have that wire secured there. And it's on the wall, so now we'll push this flat. And as you can see, it's right where we wanted it, so I'm going to take off that tape, and we're going to fire this sucker up, turn it into ambient mode, and I'm going to answer some questions for you. All right, TV is up. We are ready to connect the One Connect box, so we're going to go ahead and connect it in here first, get it in there, and now we're going to go ahead and power this up. So we'll take the power cord here and plug it in. Then you can power it up. So we will power that up and set it aside. Go ahead and put the batteries in. And I'm gonna let the customer here fire this TV up. So here you go, Julie. That button right there, go ahead and fire it up. The frame. Are you excited? I'm totally excited. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. It's, All right. it's beautiful. Ooh. So I actually have to set up a few things first. So let me set it up real quick and then we'll go to the Q&A. Once you have the TV up and you're watching TV, if you just press the power button uh, for one second, it will turn it into ambient mode and you'll get pictures and you can go ahead and pick different pictures. If you hold it down for two seconds, it will turn the TV completely off. So if you're leaving and going out of town, you don't want that on, you just hold it down for two seconds, and then if you wanna turn it back on, you just press it one time to bring the TV back on. At the bottom of the screen is all the smart apps that you can use, and you just go left and right and press the center button to choose. But if you go over to art, now you can select the art mode, and in art mode, you, can, you get some options here. And they have different pictures, different artists, uh, they have different frames that you can put around it, uh, and then you can also purchase more. So uh, you can just go ahead and look through those. Uh, again, go ahead and set this as your screen. There you go. You have a picture. So one of the questions I got was from Rebecca Boyd. What about plaster? Uh, do you think you could do this on plaster? Plaster is not really the issue with installing the TV, more so is the, uh, the boards inside that, that angle two by fours that sometimes can block the area. Um, plaster and drywall both have studs inside, so don't worry if you have um, plaster, you can still install this. But if you have brick, concrete wall, not so good. I would not recommend this TV if you have brick or concrete wall because there's really nowhere to go with that cord and that one connect box. So uh, just make sure if you get a brick or concrete uh, surface that you're installing on, have a better plan than using this TV on it. Uh, AO on YouTube said, does this TV have its own power cable or does it get power from the One Connect box? And it gets power from the One Connect box, so it does not have a separate power cord, it just has that One Connect box that you have to run in the wall or run to another area and connect to the One Connect box. We got a lot of asks to turn their music down while I'm talking, so we're gonna make sure that there shouldn't be any music very loud right now, so I'll make sure that All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Uh, leave a comment below and make sure to pound the like button and subscribe to get more videos like this. 
and just uh, follow along so that you can get one of these great Samsung frames on your wall like Playa Julie. I want to thank her for letting me come and install this and uh, shoot the video on her house. And we'll see you on the next one.